<laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, and you flipped the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to mess with you guys. Um, yeah. Two activities. 990 hip lift and uh, the wall squat. Trying to really get us in a good position here before we go to just some of our basic strength training stuff. And we're going to keep focusing on this breathing. Um, <laughs> We're just going to keep focusing on this breathing stuff as we go through basically all of our lifts today so that we're aware um, there's a time to kind of practice this stuff so that when we go to heavier weights and we go back to the gym, um, by the time we get to that stuff, it shouldn't be so conscious, right? It shouldn't be so like forced. Uh, if you're lifting a bunch of heavy weight, you're not really thinking about it. You're just, you're just doing it. Um, so let's finish up. Let's do one more round of each. I'll just go through it with you guys. Uh, 90, 90 hip lift. Oh. All right, again, here. So you can actually take a pretty wide base as long as you're able to keep your heels down. The wider you go, actually, the more um, this is gonna work at uh, helping, you know, put your hips in a, in a good position and kind of get those joints nice and stacked and centered. Um, so digging my heels down, I'm gonna reach my knees towards the ceiling. Same thing we do in a squat, right? I'm trying to get my knees to go forward and I'm rolling my hips. I should feel my hamstrings. If you don't feel your hamstrings, kind of practice just this position of rolling the hips. Once I get to that position where I can feel my hamstrings, I'm going to squeeze the roller or the yoga block, whatever I got, and try to get the inside of my legs too. They have similar influence of what the hamstrings do, and we want to kind of partner those up so we get most of the effect of what you know, we're trying to get here with the position. And now we're gonna breathe. My ribs go back and down towards the floor as much as possible. I'm gonna hold on to that position and I'm gonna breathe in. Trying not to lose, especially here where the ribs kind of flare, right? I'm gonna try and keep that as much as possible while still maintaining that hamstring tension. Let's see if you can do it for five breaths. You should hear the breath on the exhale. Like you want to hear a long, drawn out, loud exhale. Like I want to hear air moving. Five breaths. One more time with that wall squat. Ugh. Okay. No new comments. Put this over this way. Again, weight in the heels. Lower back is flat. We're thinking about knees reaching forward. If you have a hard time getting that lower back flat, got to work on that 90-90 drill more of getting your butt tucked and your ribs back is going to help you the ability to get into this position. <sighs> Same idea of pushing my rib cage back into the wall, trying to hold on to that tension as I inhale without losing my rib cage, you know, this kind of like upward position. <sighs> Tucking my waistband off of the wall. Letting my knees reach forward, you should feel your quads for sure, maybe a little bit of hamstrings if you're really getting that good tuck. A little bit of abs. Just five good breaths. And now we're rocking. Let's get to our next couple things here. Uh, we're just gonna kind of reinforce these positions with uh, some other strength stuff. So I'm going to start with some leg lowering. So you can use a wall to help you anchor your ribs down. So what I mean by that, <clears throat> if 
you have a wall, great. If you don't, you can grab a weight too. That, that will help. If you just grab a weight and have something to anchor you down. But So as I keep my elbows in tight, I'm gonna push my hands into the wall and I'm thinking about pushing my ribs down nice and flat to the floor, right? Basically what we just talked about. And I'm gonna go legs up. If I can, I'll go legs straight. And then I'm gonna lower one leg. Big exhale again. Trying to get my ribs down as I move. Lots of abs. Trying to breathe behind this. We call it breathing behind the shield, right? Let's go 10 each side. Any side, and then the next thing we're going to work through is uh, basically some hip circles. And basically, what that's going to look like is we're going to go to all fours. We're going to be conscious of our position. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is, I mean, your your back can move a little bit. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put like a a pad or something on their lower back and tell them to keep pushing into that pad so they're keeping their back flat. But from here, what we're going to do is kind of like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant, right? We're gonna go up, around, as big a circle as we can make. And we're gonna do five of those, nice and slow. Up, around, squeeze, you should feel your butt. Turn my camera, please. Really trying to open those hips up here. Controlling our range. Up, around. Do your best to keep your toes pulled towards your face or like to stay dorsiflex. So that'll be helpful in uh, just creating tension in this position. Really help reinforce. That's a five your side, real slow. Really trying to feel your glute here as you bring that knee up, squeeze and around. Yep. Keep those abs on too, right? Don't lose the abs. <clears throat> those hips moving. Okay. Is anybody else sore? My hamstrings are sore today. We're gonna do those airplanes that we did uh, last week. So in kind of single leg RDL position, kind of stay here. From here, whoop, whoop, whoop. we're pushing, trying to squeeze our butt, pulling ourselves back into our hip. Push, pull ourselves back in. So really, the pivoting point here is on the hip, but. In and out. Five to eight on each side. All right, one more time on each thing, once you're done. One more time with the leg lowering, pushing your hands into the wall or grabbing a weight and using it as an anchor. 
as a way for you to keep those ribs down. Push up. If it's tough to straighten your legs, you can keep the knees bent, that's okay. Big thing is keeping the lower back flat, ribs down. Lower one leg at a time. You want to hear that breath and that air moving. Get that air out. The more air you get out, the better your abs are going to turn on. Now we're going to those hip circles one more time. Again, I'm pushing away, feeling my abs a little bit here, keeping my back nice and flat. And then up as high as I can, keeping my toe pulled towards my face or dorsiflexing. Up, 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 up. I'm really trying to open these hips up. time with those airplanes. It's kind of like that single leg RDL position. Oh, it's up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? That shoe rolling. Or you're rolling around with the shoe on your foot. Yeah, crushed it. So it makes this some help with that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you need a lot of like hip mobility to do that one and make it look really nice. The Nate, Nate Keeney's look really good. That dude's really flexible. <clears throat> He's pretty strong too for how flexible he is. It's... I guess Dan is the same way though. Dan has like crazy dorsiflexion. Yeah. So he's mobile in like certain ways. Again, pivoting from the hip, right? Trying to squeeze your butt as you open up and then close the book and then open and squeeze. The thing about pushing, pushing your arch through the floor, that'll help you really like rotate as you push away. So today we're going through all the basic exercises, but we're only going to do probably two sets of 10 today. And we're just going to be really conscious of the position of our body and like feeling our abs. Should be feeling pretty good. Like, I don't know, my hips are feeling a little bit loosened up now. Uh, which is nice and uh, we're gonna start with <clears throat> we've got common squat common squat push-up split squat and that's kind of the first three so again we didn't do the ankle mobility stuff but next week we will and we'll talk more about like you know if you have restricted ankles if that's something that's limiting your squat some ways to kind of overcome that and some uh, exercises that you can do. But we're gonna do 10 goblet squats, and then we're gonna do 10 push-ups. And I've got like six exercises lined out, and we're just gonna be really conscious of our position as we go through it, and you know, what, what we're feeling. Especially now that we're in a time where we probably don't have like super heavy weight, 
um, it's a nice time to really practice and reinforce like what I should be feeling so that when I go to my max efforts, I don't have to think about it, right? I just do it. I just do the work and um, now's the time that we can be pretty conscious though. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm going to clean the belt. From here, I'm going to think about staying in my heels the whole time, keeping my butt tucked, my abs on. So I'm going to take a big exhale at the top. <sighs> Set my ribs. I'm going to keep that tension as I go down, inhale, letting my knees reach forward and my butt go down. That's how we're going to practice the squat. Exhale, push. So I've got that tension the whole time. Inhale. Inhaling in behind that tension of my abs. Exhale, push. We got 10 of those. Making sure that when we come to the top, we're squeezing our butt, locking out at the hips, so our quads, our butt, our abs are all tight like a plank at the top. Exhale. Shouldn't be too hard. Should, should feel pretty good. Same thing with those push-ups. Inhale on the way down. Exhale, reach. Really thinking about feeling the abs, using my breath to keep good position, especially on the push-up. I want those shoulder blades moving. I want a big reach here. Exhale to top. Find those abs. Inhale, exhale. Going to the split squat. We're just going to do five on each leg, and we can still go to that goblet position with the belt, or you can go body weight. If you go body weight, I want you to think about reaching your hands out in front of you. It will help you stay more upright. So I'll do this sideways. So from here. Big exhale, trying to keep my butt underneath me, right? Not letting my ribs flare up. Inhale, exhale. Switch. Does anybody know why it's important that we exhale when we ascend out of our squat? Who's in here? What's up, Josh? I don't know if you're still here, but welcome. Dan? Yeah, I saw that I did that with the books in his hand. That was crazy. Yeah, the question is, why is it important that we exhale as <laughs> she says, why? Oh, I was hoping that you would guess. Why well, is it important that we exhale when we come up out of the squat? Dan, Dan probably knows. Why do we exhale when we come out of the squat? Okay, next one is a tripod row. Ten each side. Taking your, you know, medium. Let's move this a little bit. Medium to heavy weight here. Ten on each side. I'm going to do it with the knee supported this time. <clears throat> Again, we're focused on pushing with this hand that's down through the bench, keeping my ribs back, good tension, good position. Yeah, let's just 
активировать даже. Okay, next one we're going to do is a floor press, 10. So another thing that we're going to talk about is uh, here in the floor press today, when we go to reach, thinking about pushing your ribs back into the floor, keeping those abs on. You can use the bench. And if you're on a bench, if you have a bench, just put your feet up on the bench. Again, the main thing here is that we're Pushing our lower back flat to the ground every time that we reach. And then I'll come take a look at what you guys did, what you guys said. So I'm here, pushing some weight into my feet, into my heels as I'm flattening out my back. Big reach. Inhale, exhale, big reach. Relaxing for a second. We're gonna go back to the beginning. Let's see what everybody said. So you don't pass out. That's <laughs> all the exercise. Yeah, can make it a little lightheaded um, at first. It's it's like a tolerance. It's something that you gotta build up over time. I definitely encourage you to practice it. I think breathing is a very underrated skill that we're missing when it comes to improving our mobility, our strength. You breathe 20,000 times a day. It's a, it's a big deal. So yeah, if we can do it well. It'll have influence over everything about our nervous system, our ability to rest. Um, yeah, definitely you don't want to pass out. Okay, let's go back to the squat. So, reason, one of the main reasons that we want to exhale as we come up out of the squat is that as when I take an exhale, the musculature of my diaphragm and my pelvic floor will both ascend upward. Um, so when I exhale, it'll actually give me support and help me control the pressure of whatever load I'm putting on it. So when I come up out of the squat and I exhale, my uh, pelvic floor is actually ascending, giving me better control and helping me pressurize my guts and whatever else, the forces of the weight that I'm having to overcome, um, which is, it's important to be able to do that. So, inhale, good tension, exhale, everything's nice and tight. So the push up. Nice heel. <laughs> yeah. You like those shoes, Dan, or those uh, books? Yeah, it helps a lot. Someday, someday I won't need it. Okay. Ten push ups. Okay, as we reach, keeping those abs tight, keeping our butt tight. Yeah, as far as the breathing stuff goes, if it is making you like pretty lightheaded, 
just do it how you normally would do. Um, it, it does take building up a tolerance to it and it, it will make you feel different. Um, breathing is one of the fastest ways to tap into the nervous system. If we breathe really fast, we can kind of rev things up and become more excited. We take some long exhales and really pause and relax. Can really get people to like lower their heart rate, lower the tone and tension in their body. So there's a time for both, right? That's where it's kind of challenging here. It's like I don't necessarily want people to get to the point where they're like sleeping and relaxed, but uh, you know, there, there's a lot of a lot of people are talking about this right now in the industry, especially when it comes to performance. Uh, you know, we want people to be more parasympathetic, tend to perform better when you're relaxed, especially athletes. Okay, split squat. Just five on each leg. to our row, ten each arm, so as we talk about getting parasympathetic, and there's a time for that, right? Most of the time, we want to be in that state. Okay, I'll, I'll talk a little more after we get done. <clears throat> There's a time to become more parasympathetic to rest, right? Rest and digest. It's the reason a lot of athletes take steroids, because they want to be able to recover faster than our opponents so they can continue to train, train, train. All right, so recovery is huge. That's why we focus on breathing. That's why it's important. One of our friends, our good friend, Amanda, is gonna be going live. Is she gonna go live with anyone else? With Nate? Well, she's at the house. I think Nate Keeney, he lives with uh, Zach Smith, uh, who, is Amanda's boyfriend. They're gonna be doing basically like meditation and uh, yeah, basically like meditation and yoga right after this. They'll go live on Instagram, and so that's gonna be learn, dream, love. That's her handle. It's Amanda Hitchcock. Remember, we're pushing those ribs back into the floor, keeping those abs on. So if you need a nice way to kind of rev down after the workout, join Amanda. Learn, dream, love, meditation, and yoga. Okay, no, no new. No new. Okay, finish your reps. We're going into the last thing today. So today's a pretty easy, pretty easy day. We got three more exercises. We're just doing a couple rounds of these, just as a way to get moving. We're going on a split squat position like we did last week. Starting here, we're dropping down. We're gonna go eight each leg. So try and drop fast, like really challenge yourself to drop down and then catch yourself in that athletic position. I drop down, boom, and I'm in control. You can come to the ball of your foot on this one a little bit. I know we talk about heels a lot, but as we go to more of those athletic positions, we do tend to go to the balls of the feet a little bit more. And we want to be strong there. Challenge. 
Challenge your balance a little bit. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's how your brain's gonna figure out kind of what's going on, and you will get better. The more that you challenge your brain, the next time you come back to this, it'll get better. Next thing we got is that single leg RDL to knee drive. We did this a lot last week too. From here, I'm reaching back, boom, driving up through the knee. If you want to add like a march or a skip, go for it. So that would look like here. But try to really control yourself on that one leg. Eight each side. Be fast. Explode. Yeah, are they starting right at eight? Yeah. Yeah, you can just hop over there, do some yoga meditation, start your day. Knocking it out. Jumping jack, where we're going more of that horizontal arm motion. Just 10. It's your own speed. Good. Okay, back to those drop downs one more time. One more time, each exercise, and then we're all done for today. Down, drop, and come to the ball of the foot on that front leg. The heel can't come off the ground a little bit. Really drop down there. Be explosive. Single leg, RDL to knee drive. You need to be really explosive with it, boom. Last time with the seal jack. Hopefully today is pretty easy for you. Got you moving. Maybe harder in different ways like the breathing stuff. So it is important. I know it's really uncomfortable, especially at the beginning. It, uh, it's not that fun. But it will make you feel better. And it will get you moving better. Just like everything else, we do it so that we get better at our strength training. That's that's really what it comes down to. It's all these mobility things need to help us with getting stronger, no matter what. If we just sit there and do mobility drills all day or breathing, we're not gonna actually get stronger or you know really reinforce getting better. 
Too busy breathing. <laughs> if you want, uh, <laughs> if you want more drills for breathing stuff, like specifically, let me know. I've got a bunch of videos that I send clients that are like progressions to the breathing, like positions that are a little bit harder and a little bit harder. Um, really, it's just getting fully exhalated, holding that position and then being able to breathe. It's gonna help like really open up some things throughout your rib cage and your back. Um, really helps people with being able to like decompress their back. Um, and I have some research articles on that stuff too, um, about how, how good breathing can be for uh, really helping us with those chronic aches and pains with, you know, especially back pain. And um, I've had a lot of experience with clients with back pain. Uh, more recently, like over the last year, I had a lady with 20 years of back pain and so our warm-ups looked like that. We did a lot of breathing, a lot of focus on her position. And uh, thanks, Amy. She was able to manage her back pain. It's not that she got out of it. I mean, it was 20 years back pain. I saw the x-ray. She had like um, discs that were kind of all over the place. Like, I, I'm not a doctor, but I could see in the x-ray, like, those, you know, they don't look like they're in the right position. And uh, she definitely had a lot of arthritis, but we got her stronger. She was able to deadlift, which was, Something she was like told not to do and it was um, her choice that she was like, you know, I, I want to be able to lift my grandkid. And so I was like, well, you better be able to lift this weight off the ground um, safely. Within, I think it was like six weeks to two months, she, for the first time was like, today I woke up, did a couple of the breathing exercises, like my back doesn't hurt today. And you know, I've been able to do stuff. And then from time to time it would flare up, obviously. Like, you know, this isn't like we're fixing this, it's just, allowing her to manage her body, get stronger, and be aware of, you know, positions that she, that gave her issues, right? And so uh, breathing can be a really nice tool to getting people aware of where their body is and kind of, I don't know, we all need more abs and we all need more posterior chains. So that's what a lot of the drills do and uh, I've had some really awesome success with them. So um, yeah, happy to share that. Um, um, Amy, if you could just shoot me a message with your email and then I will send you some uh, hyperlinks with some instructional videos that I shot. And then, uh, yeah, I'd be curious to get some feedback from you as far as you know, what you feel and how that goes. But uh, at the end of the day, this all goes back to strength training, right? Getting stronger. Um, anything we talk about, like it all goes back to that strength conditioning. Thank you so much for being here today. You guys are awesome. I hope you have a good weekend. I look forward to next week. Um, we're going to be doing something similar to what we did in week two, right? Like kind of going back. So we're like alternating some weeks, getting some variety. So things are, are staying interesting. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to chilling off over the weekend. Mm. Now that we got another like four weeks of hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that'll be fun. I'll have a ton of videos here, mm. um, for people to get some workouts when they travel or if they're stuck at home. Okay, I will catch y'all. Thanks, Richard, you too. Have a good weekend. See you guys. <clears throat> Happy Friday, yeah, I know, right? Sleep in, yeah.